How yeah, was that, Paul, coming from Lazio when you knew it was coming to an end? Because I know Chelsea, Aston Villa, and I think the Lazio manager says Rangers is wanting, and you're like, ah, no, I'm not going to Rangers there in the first division. Yeah. You thought it was Queen's Park Rangers? I thought it was Queen's Park Rangers. Well, I went going there, and then when he said, what, Glad- as I walked out the door, he went, Glasgow Rangers, and I turned around, and I just went, get him on the phone. Get him over, I said. So Walter, remember Walter coming over, and he says, uh, let me tell you about Glasgow Rangers, and I went, let me tell you what I've got in the fucking fridge. And we both had a beer, and I said, I'm signing. And he put Dave Murray on. He says, you love it. Yeah, the fans will love you. And, I mean, I was, you know, when I played for Newcastle, you always got the Leasers and the Gallagher. They would sing Rangers. They would shout Celtic. And uh, I used to have a taxi driver. And he, he used to always tell us, you should always go for the derbies. And it was only until I went up there and played them one. You know, I played in 11, unbeaten 11. I think it scored three or four. Um, it was f- fantastic. And when... You know, when I arrived at the airport and then arrived at the stadium, I went up to the, in the chairman's office at the ground with Walter and shook his hand and that. And he says, have you seen outside? I went, no. And I looked out the window and seen all the crowd. And I went, wow. Um, so it was a great feeling. What was your decision to join Rangers? I think just because, um, you know, when you when you look at... Um, when you played for your country, and then he, when you played for your country, you know, you put the... The players and what teams were. When I played for England, everyone seemed to be Rangers, like Terry Butcher, Chris Woods, you know, Ray Wilkins, they were all at Rangers. So I used to, in the World Cup, I used to give Terry Venable, Terry Butcher a stick. Fucking hell, you're playing in Scotland, Rangers, shite. And he went, don't knock till you fucking tried it. So I gave it a go, and he, he was right, like, you know. You seemed to play your best football up at Rangers. Yeah, I loved it. You know, I was fearless, you know. I remember the press saying I wasn't going to do well up there. And I just won everything, you know. I won medals with the players. I won players play. Player I won of the year. The lot, you know. And uh, I was just really enjoying my football. I loved it. You know, I'd sometimes have, have, the, odd, have a, a, the odd half a logger with the gaffer like on a Wednesday and that would be it. I remember once, it was on a Friday night, and I was at Cameron's house, and I thought, ah, it was 7 or 8 o'clock night, it was on Friday, and I thought I'd have a, a light shandy. So I remember the shandy... And I seen the gaffer walk past us, and I went, oh, fuck. And so I just thought, shit. So I left it, went to my room, and I went to, went to the dress, went to the, the, ch- went to the ground the next day on the Saturday, and it was like 10 past two. So he got your kit on, ready for the game. And he went, come here, I want a word with you. And I went, oh, fuck me. And I walked out of the dressing room, I could hear all the players going, eh-eh. So I'm like, I'm, I think that's OK. So I went to his office with him, what was that you had last night? I was just, that just a shandy gap, and nothing else. He went, what was it? Get back in there, take your kit off, put your fucking suit on, and get the fuck out of my club. So I just giggled. He went, I'm fucking serious, do it now. I went, oh, fuck. So I went in the dress room, and I've taken my kit off, my number eight shirt and that, and the players were like, what's happening? I went, I've got to go fucking home. So I put my suit on, and all the lads were giggling a bit. I went, fuck, don't, he's fuming. So I'm walking out the pitch, I'm walking out the ground and all the fucking fans are coming in. And guys, where are you going? Oh, I don't feel well today, guys. Gotta go home, I've got a stomach bug. Just fucking said that. And then I had to sit indoors for three days. And he says, right, you're allowed to come back to the club. I says, OK. And he says, I'll tell you when to fucking drink and not to drink. I went, OK, I'm sorry, Gabba. And he says, give me... So funny, he went... I didn't know, he went, get me a brace on Saturday. So I went, OK, then. So I went to the shop and bought a fucking brace. I didn't realise the brace is two goals. So I managed to score two. I managed to score three. In fact, it was against Motherwell. I scored a hat-trick, so that was OK. Yeah, but I had such great times up there, you know, because I loved fishing and I loved the hunting side of it. And, you know, we was given enough time to do all that. Did uh, you know how big the rivalry was between Celtic Rangers, especially yeah. when you played the flute? Fucking hell. When you I got mean, the death threats? Four. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Ian Ferguson, that was. He just said, you know, if you score, do the sass. You know, and what's a sass? He says that, and he showed us. He says, the fans that love it. When he said that, and he says, the fans that love it, and I went, ooh, I'll do anything for the fucking fans, me. And obviously scored against Stoke Bucharest, and I did it. So I, I scored, and on the way home, I told my dad, I went, Dad, get the papers, I'm on all the fucking back pages, man, I scored. Got man a match, scored. Stoke Bucharest, I said, fucking get the back pages, you, you love them. Give the papers to me, mum as well. So I've got up, and I went to the fucking, I went to the papers, and on the, the side bit where you're selling papers, I'm like, fuck me, I'm on the front page, shit. I went, Dad, fuck me, I don't think I'm in the back pages, but I think I'm on every other <laughs> fucking page. 
<laughs> the IRA going to kill this man. <laughs> and he just giggled. He says, you'll be all right. And then when I got that letter through, and I read it, and Walter read it, and says, you think he's going to kill us? And I think so. Fucking hell. And I said, get the police, and then the police come. And I says, have you seen this letter? Is he serious? I mean, the guy left his name, number, mobile, house address, the lot. So he's going to kill us. And the cop went, yeah, he's going to kill you. So we went over and seen him. I waited two, doors, two days. I stayed indoors. And I was shit myself. And um, the police come, and I said, did you see him? I said, yeah. And um, I says, what, was he going to kill us? I went, yeah. I said, fuck me, what are you going to do about it? I went, nothing. I says, until he comes to the, our country, so we're not going to hang around the airport. So when I used to play, I used to look in the crowd and fucking look to see if anyone's got a gun and that. So it was, went on for a few months. I was shit myself. And then obviously I got a letter back from him. He says, okay, you've not done it for a while. I'll let you go now. And <laughs> I could relax then. I went, Fuck. And Fergie, I went, you stupid bastard. <laughs> yeah. yeah but, but they're giving you something to check under your car for bombs. Yeah, I'll tell you, the police come. He says, I see it's six o'clock. And I says, what's that? He says, check under your car for bombs. I says, what, if the car starts up? He says, yeah. And I went, fucking hell. And uh, he says, be careful with your mail. If you open it, it could explode in your face. And I was like, really fucking panicking. So I used to get me mate, Jimmy. So Jimmy, go and take his, he drives into work. I'll just have a cigarette at the moment. And I used to wait for fucking Jimmy to start the car up, see if it blew up or not. I'd be, like, <laughs> I'd be like 300 yards away. I'd be like 300 yards away. Yeah. Gaza, what are you doing? I'll just have a fag, start the fucking car up. Did you break into McCoyster's house? Yeah, I knew he kept his kitchen window open. And he used to, I used to have a couple of pints at the grave. Because used to go home at about 11.30, and I used to stay at about one -ish. But I knew my house was 1.8 miles from his, so I thought I used to walk home and set up for the taxi. And then I was walking, and I thought, oh, fuck, I'm starving. So I knew he kept his back kitchen window open a little bit. So I got in and lifted the window, and I went inside, and I started just making myself a ham sandwich. And the next thing, I just see the light on behind us. We're fucking guys with a baseball bat right behind us, and he went, oh, it's fucking you. He says, I'll see you in the morning. I went, cheers, guys, I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Climbed back up the window and fucking walked over the savage. That was hilarious. That. I mean, fucking hell, good job he didn't whack us with that stick. Yeah, club, because he said he heard somebody downstairs and that, and that was just made me savage. I fucking thought it was a weird house. And you bust into the dressing room, but you had two fish. I think you and McCoy's were injured. Yeah, I was caught, me and guys were injured. And I'd been fishing and I caught a couple of trout. I says, guys, I've got these trout. Why am I sticking in Gordon Drew's? Someone's caught. He went, I've got Gordon Drew's keys. And I was there, we all giving sponsored cars, like, give money, give everyone a car with 17 grand or something. And so I put one in the boot, and Kaiser went, he's going to notice that. I went, I know that, that's all right. And I went inside his car and just squeezed it under the seat, right under the seat so he'd never find it. And then he go and he must have smelt the chow in the boot. And he come in the dressing room with the chow, he went, Gaza, you'll never catch me out. I went, yeah, you got me there, mate. And but fucking two weeks later, he went, Gaza, I'm not being funny, but there's a fucking other fish <laughs> in it. And I went, no, there isn't. And then... I eventually seen it. I had to get it out. It was fucking stinking in his car. <laughs> and he tried to sell it. He couldn't sell the car. So he, he went to David with money and had to buy him a new fucking car. So that show cost us about 17 yeah. grand or something. So I was good. But yeah, I had some laughs with it. Why do you but think you played so well at Rangers? Because I know Durante. I've met him a few times. And uh, Coy stayed there. Do you think it's because they're kind of the same nature as yourself? Like yeah. kind of up for a laugh and up for yeah, a noise I mean, up? Yeah. I mean, I thought I was quite funny in dressing room with Durante and Koisty. I was up against it, you know. I remember I would get my teeth done. <laughs> and I had temporary one, ones in first. And they were like, it hit me bottom lip. And Koisty went, fucking hell, guys. I don't think you need an apple through a letterbox. Oh, I was pissing myself. And anyway, you wouldn't told everyone. And then I'd be playing on a Saturday. And then the front pages, Gaza plays well with these new teeth. And I'm fucking God damn it. Um, but yeah, I was... I just think the morale in there, you know, and I was fortunate because I joined Rangers when we had 18 internationals, you know. That's an incredible loud job, Kyle Steve, all of them, you know. Just felt sorry for Durant because I played against him for England on the 21s against Scotland. And I remember the papers putting saying Gaza against Durant, and fucking he pissed on us. What a player he was. Yeah, well, I thought, wow, that guy's an unbelievable well. player. Yeah, it's a shame a bad tackle. Um, but he, you know, for him, someone like that, morale in the dressing room was, was brilliant, you know. How was it going to Euro 96 with playing for a Scottish team? I and got, got, hammered, Andy for, I got hammered for a few months of the players who were going to stick it right up, you English bastard. And I just went to them, I said, look, you guys, I'm playing about, again, seven years, so I know how you play. You know how I play, but you don't know how, how I'm like when I play for my country. And to score that goal against Andy Gore, I was fucking brilliant. And I gave him a quick look, a quick, quick glance when I scored it. 
and then I turned away and he was fucking he wasn't happy and I enjoyed the celebration and it was quite it was alright you know it was like I went on holiday and I, I wasn't thinking about it and then about five days ago to the end of the holiday I went oh fuck I've got to go back to Scotland yeah and I started panicking a little bit but uh, the lads were brilliant in the dressing room I used to do I used to go like I used to get a bowl in the dressing room and get a mop and pretend it was Colin Henry <laughs> And I used to flick it over the mop and then volleyed past Andy Gorham. And, oh, and then do the celebration. He, used to, he wasn't happy. But yeah, the guys were brilliant, you know. The um, team spirit was there. I've never witnessed anything like it. How was Walter Smith as a manager? Brilliant. I mean, both of them bounced off each other, Archie and, and um, Walter, you know. One would give you a bollock and the other G up. And one would give you a bollock and the other one would G up. So it worked on both favours, you know, the new went to uh, give you a bollock and the new went not to, you know. You've played in a few derbies, Paul, you've played in the Roma derby, a few London derbies. What's that compared to the Old Firm derby? Old Firm is like more hatred more than anything else, but and see what it means to them. You know, I think it was different. And in Roma and Lazio, like just say Roma won the league and the cup, done the double, but Lazio beat them that season in one game. It felt like Lazio won the league. Where this one, you know, they're playing for the titles, you know. This nine in a row to get a match of nine in a row was great and get that hat trick was special. But yeah, it's more the hatred and it's not nice really for me because I'm like from Newcastle, but seeing some of the players, what it means to them in the dressing room, wow, mighty, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, John Brown, he was funny, he was freaking, he had to be at the ground for like, say, half past one or something. He'd be there, 12 o'clock, with a brown bag lying on his back, <laughs> saving his energy. Fucking hell. I go, wow. And I smile at them. But, you know, before the start of it, you're not too bothered about it. And when you go out on the pitch and you hear the crowds and that, fucking hell. I mean, every fucking challenge, every pass is just like applaud or whatever, you know, the moaning yeah. and the groaning. Did Walter Smith used to give you the Wednesday off and every Tuesdays went out on the piss? Um, well, coming maybe sometimes in the afternoon, just have a light half an hour, but he knew what... He knew on a Monday we wouldn't train hard because he knew some of the lads would be, be on the piss and that, so he wouldn't train as hard. And just, but then on Tuesday he'd run the bollocks off her, and then he'd give us a Wednesday off. Uh, but Tuesday something train was pretty rock hard, like you know. What was the game you were drinking whiskey at half time and you came out and scored two? Good final against Hodge. Were you nervous? No, I just fucking I was just sitting there and I had the first half wasn't the best and I had that row with Koisty, and I was just sitting there I said fucking hell, and I went sorry Koisty. I said, I had any problem. And I was sitting there, I said, fucking, I've got to put my finger out. And then while Archie knocks, I went, are you had a fucking drink? I went, no. I went, go and get one. I went, oh, okay. So I went to the boardroom, I had a treble. And I went, I'll get another one. So I whacked that in. And he went, he had a drink now. And I went, yeah. He said, no, fucking go out and do the business. I went, okay. And I went and scored two in 20 minutes. But afterwards, we were with the cup final. And Walter come up and he says, right, guys, we're all going out tonight. Gaza, you've had your drink. You're fucking staying indoors. I went, all right then. So I went home and I was about 10 o'clock at night and I found out where the players were in the way, the, the managers and the wives. So I turned up the Indian restaurant, took my clothes up and danced on the table, bollock naked. <laughs> yeah, as you do. Yeah, as you do. <laughs> so it was a bit of a laugh. Uh -huh. But yeah, I had some laughs and, you know, but I was enjoying my football again. I, he said, what I said, it was, no, same for Glasgow Rangers. He says, well, have you... Great team spirit. If you want to be here with the lads, they'll never be here with you. He says, and um, you'll enjoy your football again. But people think it was hard, easy playing for Rangers. Was it fuck? I mean, you tell, if I played for Kilmarnock and I'm playing against K Rangers, I want to. I want to sign for Rangers. So I'll be working my nuts off to play well against Rangers. So the gaffer picked me to sign for Rangers. Who was the best player on the team at that time? How was Brian Loudrop? He was class. Yeah, we used to pass at each other and make noises. We, we, you know, he was. He wanted a few minutes break, just give him the ball, which is class. Koisty, his fucking finishing was incredible. I said, how do you fucking finish? He said, he says, you know, if I went for the top corner, I would never hit it. So I used to aim for the keeper. <laughs> and he said, go in the top corner. Um, yeah, well, I, was, I mean, George Alberts, fucking Bjorkland, he was unbelievable. You know, Andy Gorham didn't make mistakes for fucking years. I mean, the time I was there... Um, I was just unfortunate. And Stuart McCall could just run for fun, you know, and he got stuck in for a little player. Um, you know, so we'd, we went out there, but, you know, we had times of Walter Smith saying, right, and if you don't win 4-0 today, I'm running you on a Sunday. And he would. 
So you know, you're under pressure, and you say, right, that's two, and I want another two goals, so otherwise I'm telling you, you'd be training hard all week. So it'd be like, fucking, that's what it was like to play by Rangers. The Aberdeen game, you got a hat trick, you scored two world-class goals, if I'm honest, and I know you were going, you scored two, but then you get a penalty in the last minute, and McCoy takes the penalties. <laughs> yeah. How did, why did they give you the penalty? Well, he's, I come to the penalty, and I got the ball, and McCoy went, I'll take the penalties, because I went, fucking hell, McCoy, see, this is for a hat trick, man, I win the fucking eight in a row. He says, yeah, but I'll take the penalties. I was fucking let's take it, man. And he went, listen, I could be leaving at the end of the season. This could, he says, this could be my last goal for Rangers. So I went, well, if he fucking leaving, fuck off, I'm taking this. And he went, go on then. And so, luckily enough, I changed my mind because I always go to the other side. And I actually put it that side, you know. Because um, I remember when I took a penalty against Celtic and I missed and I did that same penalty and the keeper saved it and I never go that side. I don't know, the last minute I just changed my mind, which I shouldn't have done, but it went in, looked fortunate enough. Um, and then you know I've never won a championship before so that was my first championship and in the um, in the dressing room I can witness anything like it it was incredible it was incredible you know um, the players you know celebrating and stuff like that and then you had a few tears and I didn't realise a few of the players had tears in their eyes and obviously you won and why and then I heard like a lot of them was going to know like the, the next season was going to be the last season together, really. Like, because he was coming to the end of his time, Goffey was, Stu McCall was. Um, a lot of the players that had been together for so many years were going to be parting, you know, from a magnificent football club. Um, but, yeah, it was great celebrations. I loved it. Why did you leave Rangers, Paul? Well, I just heard Waller was leaving. Waller Smith, he just pulled us. He said, I wasn't worried the 10 games left. He said, I'm getting sat at the end of the season. And he says, they're bringing in the manager to go up the card. He's a bit awkward and the sort of person you are, you might not get on with him and you'd be stuck with him. He might not play you. Where Brian Robson, who's my idol, wants to sign you for Middlesbrough and go for promotion and they're in the FA Cup thing and that. He says, why don't you go? And so I spoke to Dave Murray. He says, we're going to get the same money we paid for you. So I thought, OK, then I'll go then. I didn't see anything of the lads. And I was on the way, halfway there, I stopped, stopped crying my eyes out. And Dave Murray rang us, he says, look, uh, just turn the car around, come back to the club. And I'd already spoke to Brian Robson, and I st sat there for an hour thinking in the, on the motorway, and I thought, I'll just go ahead with it, and, and I just carried on, went to Middlesbrough. Then obviously it was funny, because in the cup final, I can hear like one Paul Gascoigne, and I'm thinking, who's that? And I looked at the stadium, there was 10 of the Rangers players at the, at the game, seeing one Paul Gascoigne, it was funny. Was but that? then it was so weird to see them, you know? Like, you know, fucking one week I'm like with Rangers and then next thing I'm in a cup final, which I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy the game at all. And I felt out of place. I felt lost. And I just felt like oh, I shouldn't have left Rangers, you know. Do you love that? Is that a regret that you Yeah. Massive, yeah. Huge regret, yeah.